Hello everyone. Welcome to Rosa Technocrat. Today we are going to talk about upgrading a firmware version on FortiWeb. This will be all about uh, upgrading the firmware on FortiWeb. What should be the pre-checks before the upgrade and the procedure to upgrade it. Let's begin. Okay, so uh, everyone might be having questions around the upgrade of the FortiWeb and how much time it is going to take, uh, whether you need some maintenance uh, window for the upgrade, uh, how much maintenance window you should consider. So these are all the questions that generally comes into uh, engineer's mind or like before planning for an upgrade of the device or of the forty web so uh, generally the upgrade of an forty web takes around 10 minutes for a cluster of two devices uh, but sometimes that this configuration or this upgrade time may vary depending on the configuration but in around 10 minutes or you can say 15 minutes of time it takes to upgrade uh, a cluster of 240 web devices okay so uh, if, let's say if you have a HA cluster uh, where you have got two devices active passive or active active depending on the configuration yes so when we are doing the upgrade of the firmware both the devices are upgraded in the cluster but the devices are upgraded one by one so for first the secondary or the standby appliance gets upgraded and once the upgrade for the secondary is finished, the primary starts upgrading. So there is a less maintenance window or less downtime for your actual services. Yeah. So if you have the device in HA and one of them gets upgraded at any one point of time, that means you don't have to have a uh, downtime for your actual applications that are hosted behind the FortiWeb or hosted on the uh, FortiWeb device. So it's it's good to have an uh, high availability setup always, uh, not only for FortiWeb, but generally for all the network or security devices. And I will always suggest to go through the release notes of the version before upgrading. So why like? Uh, you need to go through the release notes is uh, because release notes provides a detailed information of any version with respect to the upgrade path that you have to follow for example you want to upgrade uh, from to 7.2 let's say and currently you are running on 7.0 so what should be the upgrade path you need to follow to go from 7.0 to 7.2 so that will be mentioned in the release notes of the version of 7.2 so 7.2 release notes mention like what should be the upgrade path that you need to follow and then so the, 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 these are the things like where that you need to consider before upgrading of an 40 web device so the most important is the release notes not only because of the upgrade path but it, it also tells you about any known issues in the version and it tells you about fixed issues as well if you had any fixed issues in the past so it tells that also so release notes is an important place and even if you call uh, the Fortinet support or any Fortinet engineer so they will always redirect you to go through the release notes at least once and decide based on the release notes okay so before uh, going for the upgrade deciding for the upgrade what are the things we need to know is how much upgrade time we need which will be like around 10 to uh, you can also say 15 minutes okay and sometimes it may vary depending on the hardware model and the configuration that is there but around 15 minutes it takes so can both the device be upgraded in the cluster yes both can be upgraded and it will be first on the secondary and then on the 
primary. So it will be one at a time and the services will be active and running over the device which is alive and currently active. And third is you have to go to release notes of the version that you are planning for an upgrade and you should read all the known issues possible known issues which are reported into that version okay so let's go now uh, generally before going for an upgrade the engineers or uh, the administrator whoever is handling the 40 web they don't do a pre-check <coughs> excuse me they don't do a pre-check so i will suggest like you should do a pre-check before upgrading so that you know the difference between the pre-upgraded and after the upgrade situation and you should notice like what is the current cpu memory utilization disk utilization and all before the upgrade and after the upgrade so that uh, you don't uh, land into some issues where you see a high cpu utilization after the upgrade or a high memory utilization after the upgrade uh, if you have not done the pre-check or if you have not noticed those details before the upgrade then you may not be sure whether this was the same situation before the upgrade or the or is it caused by the upgrade itself so that's why i always suggest to do a pre-check on the services that are running the services that are live on the 40 web so that you have a good idea and you can tell to your management after the upgrade like uh, this services were already down or these 40 web services which are hosted these are already down so these are like all the pre-checks that you should do before the upgrade and to make yourself or to save yourself from any unwanted issues which might not be because of the 40 web and maybe the underlying application or hosted applications issue themselves uh, recently i had been into some of uh, these kinds of issues where the actual issue was because of their uh, application or their web server but it's always pointed to 40 web because we performed an upgrade activity so to avoid all such kind of escalations or management issues or application team issues i will suggest you to check all the virtual servers or pools uh, the status of the pools before the upgrade so you can uh, tell the application owners like this was the situation even before the upgrade or these were the services which were already down before the upgrade so these so these uh, small points you should always notice okay so when coming to the checks of the 40 web the device itself we should see like verify if all hardware is fine uh, so that can be done by using diagnose hardware check all I will show you how does it show and then we can verify the CPU and memory utilization of the device before the upgrade and later on you can have it to compare it like uh, is there something abnormal after the upgrade. We should always see any crash logs before the upgrade so that you know there is nothing abnormal. Verify like the HA status of the device whether it's currently active, passive or like uh, are you good to go before the upgrade. And verify the synchronization of course so oh, I am sorry here it says synchronization O and verify the synchronization I can I can show you like if you want to do all these checks on a live, live device so let's see when we are on, uh, so right now I'm logged on to a 40 web and let's see if I am doing a diagnose hardware check all so what this command does is quickly diagnose hardware check all it checks the cpu memory check hard disk check nic check and ssl card check so as in my case you can see the nick check is failing because i don't have any nick cards corrected <coughs> except the management card uh, i'm sorry the management port or port one so it's showing nick cards are failed or the nick check is failed because it is not able to do any uh, checks for the nick so it shows nick check fail so the, the, this uh, is useful uh, before going for an upgrade on the li live device in a production situation so you should always do a diagnose hardware check all and see if any device is failed or any device is having issue before the upgrade itself 
coming to the next command is get system status yeah so when we are doing get system status we will be having an information like what is the current version running on the device serial number hard disk is available and the ha mode so of course, currently i am into a standalone mode so it's showing me only the standalone then we should do also check like uh, this one as i told get system performance so when we do get system performance it tells the usage of the cpu like five percent is used 95 percent is idle in my case memory state it is just 10 percent is used and the uptime of my device is nine days seven hours so the, the, the if we note down all these points or if we run these commands before the upgrade that helps us to do a comparison or to check like if all is good after the upgrade okay so get system status get system performance and dial hardware check all so these are with respect to the hardware itself and then we have diagnose system ha status so in my case the ha is disabled so it's showing as ha is disabled otherwise onto the production you can see it should show the correct status of the ha and then we can do whether configuration is synchronized by using diagnose system ha conf d status but as my ha is disabled maybe next time i will uh, bring up a device one more 40 web device and do it with ha as well so the, the, these are some of the pre-checks that we should do on a 40 web device before upgrading let's go okay now coming to how to upgrade the firmware so when we are logged on to a 40 web we have to go under for maintenance and then the firmware if you notice here the this for any 40 web device is generally uh, partitioned into two two partitions is divided into two partitions so this partition helps us to keep two firmware at a time so it is something like uh, active partition and a non-active partition so active partition is the one which is currently active and which is currently running the device is booted via and the alternate partition or the second partition keeps a uh, second copy or the old version copy so this helps us in case of a rollback of the firmware version so for example here i am showing you two screens one from one device and a second from other device second from other device so if you see here one of the 40 web i had which where one partition is the active partition and running on 6310 but the second partition is free and don't have any software version in it okay so that means there is only one software software installed onto that and you don't have any to roll back or you don't have any old version okay now to show you the behavior of a different uh, where you have two I, I pasted this one more screenshot if you can see here the active partition is this which is currently running on 707 before 707 the device was running on 642 <coughs> so device was running on 642 so in this case it will be helpful for us to uh, do a rollback or downgrade the version so what we have to do is just we have to say boot alternate firmware so th this two partition div uh, uh, dividing of the disk or dividing of the st storage into two partitions two boot partitions this helps us in case of downgrade or any issues after the upgrade we can quickly boot click on boot alternate firmware so this was all about like uh, the benefit of two partition and supporting or how we can roll back the uh, current firmware version okay so when we upgrade so in case of upgrade we simply have to click on upload and reboot so what upload and reboot does is when we click on upload and reboot it takes the newer firmware version places on this non-active partition and boots it 
with the new partition with this partition and makes it active so that you have the older version copy as it is and reboot it from the new one so we'll see this on a live device now let's go okay so now as you can see here if you go on to a 40 web go under system maintenance and firmware so you can see here we have got two partitions so the one partition which says active active means it is showing 707 and what is the current partition current running version that is 707 that means the active partition which is marked as green is the current running software or current running firmware version and the version which is cross and red mark that is a older olden firm older firmware copy now this is giving an option to upload and reboot so upload and reboot means take a new firmware version that you want to upgrade and then it will change that partition to active so for example now i am going to upgrade this from 707 to 725 so i already went through the release notes as i told like these are the release notes you can go to docs.fortinet.com or just google it 40 web release notes and you can find it under release notes you can find it under release notes so when you open the release notes what it says it says uh, to upgrade this is the upgrade path so for upgrade path it's so it it tells uh, to upgrade from 40 web 70x go upgrade directly that means i can upgrade directly from 70x version to 725 and similarly like we discussed in the beginning this release notes also contains all the known issues for example they are known issues so this is one of the known issues so this tells us about the known issues with the version so we should always go through the release notes okay coming back to the upgrade let's go so when we check the release notes release notes says the upgrade path is upgrading from previous release it says if you are upgrading from 70x upgrade directly so i am going to my 40 web i have already downloaded the firmware go to local hard disk click on upload and i have to go to download and that's my latest image 40 web 4000 depending on the hardware model and the fortinet.out so this file name contains uh, the product type then the fortinet hardware model for which this image is particular then it contains the build major build version 700 and then build number so this build number tells us about the specific uh, build in version 7.x so it will be like 725 test fortinet.out out. so out is the extension for this firmware okay so when you download it from the support portal you have to search the image specifically for your model so all fortinet images or 40 web 40 gate all the images are hardware specific and while you are downloading you will simply see this model numbers and the version based on that it can be downloaded so i will click on ok and once i say ok it starts the uploading image and as we can see currently my time is 9 46 pm and it will take some time for the uploading the image let's see how much time it takes uh, as i already know like uh, the whole upgrade process takes around 10 to 15 minutes yeah but uh, during the upload uh, the device is absolutely fine it doesn't reboots <coughs> nothing happens with the device but the uh, 40 web is uploading a copy of the firmware from your local pc to the device itself and once the image is uh, copied onto the device then it will reboot and start the actual upgrade so during the reboot if you have a standalone device you will see an outage and if you have an high availability cluster you will not see an outage but it will first upgrade the standby or the secondary device and then it will start the uh, upgrading the active device so there will not be an outage 
but there might be some critical or sensitive applications in your uh, data center or at your organization. So you have to check out the dependencies for that particular minute because there might be some time when you might get a uh, like uh, RTO or the HTTP timeout for a few seconds when the device is, device is switching over to active to standby and standby to active. So that, that, that might be a fluctuation for a few just second or millisecond only so that you have to take care. As you can see the upload is going on and it's completed up to 31%. Meantime we will just put an ICMP ping request to the device and to see when the device reboots. Okay, let's have an keep an eye on both the things and we'll observe when the device is rebooting. You can see now the upload was completed and it says please wait two minutes for the system to update and restart so the device is going for a reboot now and we will be seeing like the icmp request will time out device will reboot and uh, the upgrade will be completed <coughs> Yeah, so the put it timed out because the device is closing all the process so we can see that the put is actually timed out. <coughs> yeah, so after the reboot the device came back up. The ping is started and let's see if the device came back. Up. I will just open in a new tab and we'll see if the device is restored or is it is still in the process of coming up so it says the system is still restarting please wait so let, let, let us wait for some time once the HTTPS service or the web service is active the device should be reachable yeah, so the device is now upgraded. I can see like on the console, and this is the console. I can see the device is upgraded. So when once the device is upgraded, you will the GUI will automatically log out and will come on to the login page. <clears throat> so let's go and check whether the upgrade of the device was successful or not so yeah we can see 40 web 7 to 5 it's showing as highlights and we will select it as don't show this again and i am done so we can see the software of the, the firmware has been upgraded to 7 to 5 from 707 if we go under system maintenance firmware now we see so the, the, this this was about the partition so the now the version with 725 is the active partition and has a active mark in front of this whereas the older version is marked as non active partition and the next version will be downloaded in this partition whenever you are planning for an upgrade so so basically it also makes our life easier for a downgrade if in case you want to downgrade because of any issue so that you can simply click on boot alternate firmware and you should be able to downgrade or roll back your upgrade to the previous version so that's it this was all about 40 web upgrade guys do let me know for any queries any concerns on this video 
और प्लीज हेल्प मी विथ योर इनपुट सजेशंस और एनी काइंड ऑफ वीडियोस दैट यू मे वांट टू सी आई कैन क्रिएट द वीडियोस और ट्रबल शूटिंग सेशंस बेस्ड ऑन योर इनपुट्स सो बिफोर एंडिंग वी लाइक नाउ वी हैव फिनिश्ड विथ अवर अपग्रेड वी अपग्रेडेड द डिवाइस एंड देन इफ आई मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड इट्स नथिंग आई गेस okay now moving on to the next slide so we were here okay so i had explained this and going back to the next slide that's it and so i have used some of the references from different uh, articles into from different kb articles so some of them are here and please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and all your comments or inputs are uh, most welcome thank you so much thank you bye bye